Welcome into Sports Memo's betting podcast, talking Thursday college basketball with Mid Major Matt. Mid Major Matt, welcome to the podcast. How you doing? Uh, doing well, Drew. Very sad that there's no Thursday night Gonzaga game, so we can't take the first half over uh, tomorrow night. It's been a nice run, though. You've been uh, nailing these first half over in the Gonzaga game as your best bet, but you got a best bet on board, right? Yes, we do. We'll certainly get to it as we go along with our five games for today. All right, let's go off at the top of the card here. 601-602, Thursday night's college basketball slate, Drexel at William & Mary. We got William & Mary minus six at home, 138 in the hook, the total, Matt. So uh, we've talked about William & Mary, so I'm not going to run through all of their stuff, but for the people who are new to the podcast this week, William & Mary is a staple every Thursday we talk about them. Uh, The Tribe are one of the most efficient teams on offense. They are 29th in the country in two-point percentage, 91st in three-point percentage, 54th in free throw percentage, but their offense has hit the skids right now. 57, 88, 58, 59, 60, 50, 64 over this last stretch, so they're not scoring points right now. Um, But we've talked about it in the past. You don't often get totals in the 130s with a team like this. Only 10 times in the last three years. Now, granted, seven of those went under the total, which is a bit of a worry, but um, you don't often get William & Mary totals at this low number. On the Drexel side, they have uh, they beat William & Mary at home 84-57 in their last meeting way back a couple of weeks ago. William & Mary shot really badly in that game. They were out-rebounded by a lot, 40-26. to uh, Drexel shot the ball really well, which is very, not very characteristic of them. Away from home this year, they've allowed 80, 72, 85, 71, and 89 in the CAA, and there are some clunkers in terms of offenses in there. Uh, Drexel turns the ball over way too much. They're not as good of a team on the road. This feels like a place where William Mary should get some frustrations out. Hopefully they figure the offensive stuff out. The William Mary Tribe should win this game rather easily, and I'm going to consider the over here because I think that, once again, we're getting a price here for a team that's just due for an explosion when it comes offensively. So at 138 and a half, I'm leaning towards William Mary as a side, and I'm also leaning towards the over here at 138 and a half. All right, with the tribe tonight, William and Mary tribe, possibly minus six, and looking towards the over as well for mid-major Matt. We got next game up here. Conference USA action, 631-632. The rotation numbers, if you're following along at home. ODU at Rice. That's Old Dominion at Rice. Minus one, minus one and a hook is what I'm showing right now. That's the Rice Owls at home, Matt. 141 being the total. Now, remember, this is the last weekend for Conference USA before the great reshuffling, I like to call it. And for those who are not familiar, Conference USA, after this stretch, is going to change up their schedules. They're going to pair the top four teams and then the middle four teams and the bottom four teams. In theory, it's supposed to help them get better tournament resumes. Now, it's not going to help again this year because uh, Conference USA is going to be a one-bid league. So this is the last set of games, potentially, before they play a whole new set of games starting uh, in a couple weeks. So ODU is an underdog here. They've won three of their last five. They did win on the road at Southern Miss, but their offense is putrid. 294th in two-point percentage, 342nd in three-point percentage. They've scored 60 or less five times away from home this season. Rice, they've won three straight, but that came after they lost nine of their last 10. The offense is pretty good. They're putting up some numbers, scoring 80 or more in four straight, but their defense is absolutely abysmal. 343rd in two-point defense. Almost half of their shots are three-pointers, which is crazy to think about. Now, ODU's defense defense is going to show up in this game, I think. Uh, the 141 and a half seems like a high number. Now, I don't usually take unders, but I'm recommending potentially the under here because I don't think Rice is going to get to 80. Uh, I think that what we're going to have here is a potentially a slower game. I think ODU's defense is going to stretch out a little bit on Rice's three-point shooting, and, and, and I lean to the under here. I don't love unders, so I can understand if people don't want to take it, but 141 and a half is a little high for an ODU game. They're not quite UVA when it comes to defense, but uh, the Monarchs' defense is pretty good, and, and you don't usually see numbers this high in ODU games. Mid-Major Matt, this being a Conference USA game and it getting reshuffled, like you said, starting, uh, what, next week, is there anything we can take into it as handicappers that you you think can maybe get an advantage here betting Conference USA games, not only this week, but next week when they do reshuffle? Well, the, what's going to happen is, I think, is you may see some teams play each other for a third time. We just finished last weekend where FIU and FAU had home and home on Thursday and Saturday last week. So we may see teams actually play a third time and then potentially in the conference tournament play a fourth time. So you're going to have a lot more um, you're going to have a lot more things to look at when it comes to future matchups. But I, I think the schedule is important to see who's on the road, what kind of weekend road trips there are. Now they do, I believe, if I remember correctly, they give them either the whole week off so they could prepare because obviously there's travel 
involved, or they at least keep them off until uh, Saturday. So that's something to consider here. Um, it's weird because there's motivation usually in something like this, but as I said, this is a one bid league, and so like ODU is not going to care more or less because of who they're going to play in that reshuffling coming up. So there's no way you think a, a second CUSA team gets in? I don't think so. I mean, Louisiana Tech is 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 playing well this year. I know UAB has been hot and cold in North Texas, but I don't think any of them have any non-conference victories that's going to help them. So whatever they're doing right now is they're kind of just setting each other up to kind of, you know, get the best situation when it comes to the Conference USA tournament, which is in Texas, which is, we can get into that completely. They play in a random uh, practice facility with all sorts of weird sight lines. We can get into that closer to the tournament, but um, I don't think there's any extra motivation anywhere. There might be some teams like, look, if there's a team that's on the cut line for one of the segments as opposed to another, maybe you'll see some sort of extra play. But right now in this conference, there's just not enough good teams for it to matter. And, and I, I don't see any extra edges on Thursday, at least maybe Saturday, depending upon the standings and how they line up. He's mid-major Matt on Twitter at mid-major Matt obviously knows his college basketball as good as anybody out there. Check him out. Sports memo. Dot com. We got five six three five six four here. San Francisco at Santa Clara, nine p.m. Eastern tip here. So six p.m. on the Pacific Coast. We got minus one in the hook. That's San Francisco on the road. One forty eight the total here, Matt. We uh, we had to put a West Coast Conference team in just because Gonzaga is not there. And actually, ironically, St. Mary's, I don't believe, is also playing on Thursday. So San Francisco, they've cooled off tremendously. Three straight. They've lost four of their last six. Uh, they do have a couple road wins, although none of them are very good. San Diego, Pacific, and Fresno State. They're one of the worst teams when it comes to three-point defense. They allow teams to shoot just over 39% from long range. So San Francisco, a team we thought maybe would get up there to the third spot, maybe in the West Coast Conference, is certainly tailing off. Now, they're a slight road favor in this one. Santa Clara plays at a really quick pace. Very efficient offense, 58th in two-point uh, shooting, 56th in three-point shooting. They're actually pretty good defensively. They've lost twice at home to Gonzaga, of course. Gonzaga's beating everybody. And Pepperdine at home in overtime. The last time these two teams played, San Francisco won 80-61 to at home in a 68-possession game. But when you look closer at the box score, San Francisco shot 63% from two-point land and out-rebounded the Broncos 45-26. to Santa Clara also in that one shot terribly, 15-46 of from two and 4-12 of from from three point land. I think that kind of flips over when you come back to a, a home base here. I think Santa Clara is going to play a little bit better at home. Uh, we've already seen a little bit of an adjustment. There's a lot of ones out here by the time we tape this on uh, Wednesday night. The total has come down a little bit. I lean to the over here, and I actually think there's some value in Santa Clara. And since it's one, you may want to look at the uh, money line, depending upon if you can get even money there, because I think Santa Clara can win this game outright. All right. Matt, we got Winthrop Garner Webb up next. And Added board game here, four and a half. That's Winthrop Lane on the road, 141 and a half the total. Why do you want to talk this one? Well, uh, we talk about Liberty a lot on this show, and that's another team in my in my state here. Well, uh, Radford, who's a team in, in Virginia, went into Winthrop, gave them their first conference loss. Pretty ridiculous when you think about it, because Winthrop has been steamrolling teams. Their offense is really good, but Radford shut them down when they had to. So now you've got a Winthrop team coming off their first conference loss. They hit the road to play a Gardner-Webb team. These two teams played in Rock Hill, which is where Winthrop is. Earlier this season, Winthrop won 99-95 in triple overtime. So Gardner-Webb gave them everything they could handle uh the thing to consider here is was 69 to 69 before the overtimes began so there was 138 points here gardner webb shot really well winthrop shot really well they made a combined 44 free throws gardner webb's won five of their last six they've scored 80 points or more in three of four and four of their last six they're shooting really well in long range in conference play, and they've scored a ton of points at home. You know Winthrop wants to get up and down here. I like the over here. This probably is my best bet. When the, by the time we tape it, Gardner Webb right now the totals at 141 and a half. There's a 142 out there. Um, when it comes to added games, you're going to want to get in early on a number because these things do move. Um, if you're not looking at it, you're going to have to potentially lock it in the moment you watch this podcast. It may move a little bit. I like it up to like. I don't know, 144 or so, maybe 144 and a half, probably no more higher than that. I just think Winthrop's offense is going to click. I think they're going to get whatever they want. They play at a faster pace. Garner Webb plays at a slower pace, but they've been really efficient. They're scoring a lot of points at home in conference. So I think the over here for Winthrop and Gardner Webb is probably going to be my best bet for uh, Thursday's uh, card. All right. He's mid major Matt on, at mid major Matt on Twitter. Check his workout at sports memo.com. Interested in his service. Uh, also doing MLB, right? Mid major Matt. 
Uh, yeah, so here's how we do the MLB. We love to jump into the MLB. Uh, we start out for the first couple months. I will warn people there's probably going to be a stretch of a couple weeks in baseball. I think a lot of us handicappers have it where we just get burnt out. There's games every night. What Baseball season's what, 200, 200 days, 225 days, and handicapping every day nonstop. I, I know, at least for me, there's a couple weeks that I just want to be like, look, I'm done, and I want to look at baseball. I'll take a break. So you could definitely sign up with me for baseball, but just know towards around – July, there may be a couple weeks where I'm like, all right, I'm taking my break. I just want to get away, watch a couple games, see what happens, and kind of recalibrate some systems and things like that. And if you're interested in jumping on board his MLB service, we actually got a special for today, DM695. That makes his whole MLB season less than $700 for $695. You can get his full MLB season. You can get Drew Martin's full MLB season back-to-back profitable years. You can get Brian Leonard at wagertalk.com, his full season for $695. Really, any handicapper, sportsmemo.com or wagertalk.com, full MLB season using the coupon code DM695 at checkout. Matt, we got a late night special here and then best bet time to, uh, I guess, lock you in on something here for the listeners. It's been hot as of late, so hopefully keep it rolling. But we got the late night West Coast degenerate special here. And this is a true degenerate special. Getting me uh, excited here, Matt. I, I, hopefully you got a recommendation, side, total, something. 681-682, Chicago State at Cal State Bakersfield. And I believe Chicago State, depending what kind of power ratings you want to go off of, is the worst Division One college basketball team. You can correct me if I'm wrong. 135 being the total, minus three touchdowns. Yes, that's minus 21, minus 21 and a half at some shops. That's Cal State Bakersfield laying that number at home, hosting Chicago State. Yeah, for me, it's probably a nip and tuck between them and Kennesaw State. Kennesaw State is uh, is a one-win team. And, uh, but Chicago state, they just, uh, you know, it's Kennesaw state, Mississippi Valley state, and probably Chicago state, Ken Pomeroy, uh, who I'm hoping to knock on wood, talk on to my show on Thursday, uh, here in Richmond has, uh, Chicago state is the worst team in the country. Their three of their four wins are against Judson, Purdue Northwest and North park, which are all teams below them. I, I don't even know what division they are, by the way, they beat Purdue Northwest at home by 12 and they beat North park by 13. So Purdue they're not Northwest. Is that like like the school Purdue, but then there's a Northwest at the end? I'm guessing. I'm reading right off of Ken Pomeroy's page. uh, Purdue Northwest is the title of the school, and they only beat him by 12. So, like, that tells you a lot here about what kind of team we're looking at here. And also, if you're familiar with Ken Pomeroy's page, there's, like, two things that are green, and then there's about 9,000 things that are blood red uh, for Chicago State. But here's the the case with them. I mean, you look at them on the road. They have been absolutely abysmal. In conference, they've lost by 32, 24, and 39. Uh, For those who don't have access to Ken Pomeroy's stuff— uh, offensively, they are 335th in two-point offense, 288th in three-point offense. Uh, they are 338th in two-point defense. They are 352nd in three-point defense. Every loss in conference has been by double digits. So you're thinking, okay, well, are we going to lay the points with Bakersfield here? Uh, I, it's not necessarily something I want to do here. Bakersfield's lost four straight. They won three in a row before that. They're 341st in three-point defense, and they're the worst team in the country When it comes to free throw shooting, they have put the opponent on the free throw line the most of any team in the country at 53 percent almost of possessions. So it's a bit of a concern here. They're only double digit home wins this year. Bakersfield were against sub division one teams and they beat Hampton, you know, one of our favorites uh, by 13 points way back in December or November. These two met in Chicago State. Bakersfield won 72 to 54. Um, Bakersfield out rebounded them 33 17. Chicago State actually made more free throws than two and three pointers combined. They made 18 free throws. They made 15 total shots, nine twos and six threes. You know, I, once again, I talked about how I don't like taking unders here, Drew, but like this one could be an under here because when you look consistently at Chicago State throughout their season, they just don't score a lot of points. And I think Vegas is starting to figure out that, look, they're not scoring points. I'll go over it real quick. The last five games, 64, 49, 51, 53, and 54. Um, they don't score over 70 very often this year. Uh, Cal Bakersfield also doesn't play at a very fast pace, 318th in the country right now. Um, I think that this one could go snail's pace to the under here. Now, the one thing I'll ask you about, Drew, because I know you're big into Ken Pomeroy, 
He's got this projected at 140. So we obviously have about a five, a four and a half point difference here. Do you take into account at all that um, there's a big difference between Ken Pomeroy and the actual number itself? Yeah, it, it definitely matters. So we're seeing a 134 and a half in the marketplace. And, and you're right. I mean, so he's got it. He's got it a lot higher. So it almost tells me that the, the market is on to what you're saying in terms of because I love that profile and pretty much, you know, anything I'm betting big, I'm, I'm betting college basketball totals more so than sides. And and one thing I like to concentrate on here is bad teams, especially when bad teams are playing bad teams, Matt. It's core. There's a there's a higher correlation with an under for whatever reason in basketball. Good teams just score more, even if they're highly efficient on defense. It's just highly efficient on offense matters for scoring and in and, and bad teams playing each other. Yes, they're going to be bad on defense, but even more importantly, not not drastically more importantly, but definitely it's accountable for that. It's more important. They're they're not very talented on offense. So I that's what I would kind of point to here. Now, granted, I haven't been involved with the Chicago State or Cal State Bakersfield game all year long, but because it's a true late night degenerate special. And we're talking about it here on the pod. I'm very interested in betting on it. And your analysis was good, man. And and I agree with you. I would look towards the under in this one as well. I, I think the only reason they see the over potentially is they think there's going to be a ton of fouls. Chicago State's going to have a parade to the free throw line like they did in the first game. But in the first game, it was still a 72-54 contest. That went over that total, and it would still go under this total. So I don't know. I don't think Cal Bakersfield's all of a sudden going to start running. They're 318th. They, they just came off a game with 61 possessions. They had a game against uh, New Mexico State with 58 possessions. So I don't see any reason for them to change styles here. So I lean to the under, but Ken Pomeroy is scaring me a little bit here with this big difference. I think that that's a good sign, actually. Um, I, I, I'm with you. I think. Uh, well, so, so what? What are you? I guess are you going on record with under the one thirty four and a half here? I'm going on record with the under one thirty four and a half. Maybe I hope that there's a correction. Well, by the time people watch this podcast and we get a point or two here, I just don't see how it's going to go over this total because I just don't see how Chicago State's going to score and Cal State Bakersfield doesn't want to run. The average possession on offense is 19 seconds, so you figure. They're not a good shooting team either. So I just I could see a similar 7254 type game here. So I would lean to the under here, but I'm, you know, a little worried and skeptical because Ken Pomeroy has a little different number here. Yeah, and you gotta add in the fact, okay, Cal State Bakersfield's the more talented team and they're at home. So it would really worry me if they were looking to push pace because they're going to be able to control tempo. But like you're touching on, they're a slow paced team anyway. So they're they're gonna want to go slow, Matt. Exactly. And and uh, Chicago State has played some faster games. But if you look at the opponents, a lot of the faster opponents make them go faster. I don't think Cal State Baker. So the first time they played, it was a 62 possession game. So I, I could see something similar to that. We're not going to have fouls late. We're not going to have a close game. So I can't see that pushing it over the total. So I would maybe I'll ask Ken Pomeroy tomorrow when I talk to him. What do you see in the Chicago State Bakersfield game? <laughs> That's a great, I, I love having that, uh, that, that option. And guys, if you're in the uh, Richmond, Virginia area, check Matt out on ESPN radio there. Matt, uh, can you let them know where they can find you? Uh, ESPNRichmond.com. Knock on one. We tried to have them on Friday. It didn't work out. 3.15, hopefully, Eastern time uh, tomorrow, uh, Thursday, on e uh, ESPNRichmond.com. Uh, and you can find the link on our uh, webpage at ESPN Richmond. All right. And uh, he's been Major Matt on Twitter at Mid Major Matt. Guys, the coupon code for this podcast is DM695 at checkout. MLB season, full season. Uh, big savings there, sportsmemo.com. So if you're into MLB betting, check Mid Major, Mid -Major Matt out. Drew Martin out, sportsmemo.com. Also check out Brian Leonard as well. Uh, Mid Major Matt, you want to uh, give out a best bet and uh, any closing thoughts here for the pod? It's the over in the Gardner-Webb game. Uh, it's right now, as of taping, around 141, 141 and a half. I like it up to 144-ish, 144 and a half. Probably not above that, but uh, the over in Winthrop and Gardner-Webb are added game special for the podcast. All right. Mid-Major Matt, thanks for the time. Guys, best of luck with your bets. We'll talk tomorrow.